So welcome, this is going to be screencast number two for chapter 11 and we're going to be looking at section 11.2. So if you recall from screencast number one, we had focused on a lot of the vocabulary that you guys would be looking at in chapter 11. So what we're going to do in section 11.2 is actually apply and use that vocabulary as we discuss Mendel's principles. This is going to be the section where I will actually introduce you guys to the idea of a Punnett square. So before we actually begin our discussion on Punnett squares, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we understand that probability is a big part of genetics. If you think about Mendel's work with his garden peas, he was following specific traits through several generations and he was taking that data and analyzing that data to see what was the likelihood that those traits would appear in the next generation. Now, probability is probably a concept that you guys have looked at in math class. And the easiest way to understand probability is to simply look at the diagram right here. I think all of us have flipped a coin before. Now, we understand that the coin, of course, has two sides to it. It has a side that has a head on it, and it has a side with the tails, of course. And when we flip that coin, we understand that there is a 50 percent chance or one half chance that it would actually end up heads when we flip the coin and that there is a 50 percent chance or a half a chance that it's actually going to end up tails. And so this is a pretty simple concept that you probably learned about back in elementary school and middle school. But what we need to understand here is that we use this same concept as we construct our Punnett squares and look at the likelihood that that trait will actually show up in the offspring that are produced from that cross. Now one important thing to understand with probability is that when it comes down to past outcomes, these outcomes that you saw or observed do not affect future ones. And that's an important thing to understand when you look at Punnett squares as well. So in other words, if you flip the coin and it shows up heads, it was a 50-50 chance that it would show up heads. So let's say you're going to go ahead and flip it again, and let's say it shows up heads again. And let's say you flip it a third time, and again, it shows up heads when you flip the coin. So a lot of us would think that maybe there's something here where possibly, because it showed up heads so many times, that we would think there probably is a better chance that it's going to show up heads, but that's not really the case. Each time you flip that coin, it's considered an independent event. So again, past outcomes do not affect any of the future outcomes. And so that's something we're going to look at again as we get into our discussion of Punnett squares. Now the idea of segregation is going to be really important when it comes down to our ability to actually predict outcomes from the various genetic crosses that we're going to perform in class. Those alleles, in other words, those varieties of that gene, will segregate or separate randomly. Now this is really important. Now this random separation is going to occur during gamete formation. Now let's remember that the gametes are actually the eggs that are produced by the female or the sperm that are produced by the male. Now if you look over here on the right, this is going to be considered our parental generation. Now remember back in 11.1 .1, we had talked about the P generation and the F1 generation and just talked a little bit about the F2 generation. That P generation is going to be the original parents that we start off with. Now what I mean by the allele separating is that remember we have actually two copies of every gene. We have two alleles. We have one here and one here. Sometimes they're the same, sometimes they're different. Now when we produce gametes, when we produce eggs or sperm, those alleles will separate because remember you can only pass one on to your offspring. Now again here in this case we have the two parents. If they self-pollinate then of course what's going to happen is we end up with the F1 generation only having one of the characteristics of the two traits that we're looking at. So in this case we're looking at purple flowers and we're looking at white flowers. And the way that we would code for those is two capital R's and two lowercase r's. So the purple is going to be dominant over the white. But in this case, only the purple shows up because we have that dominant allele that is present. And as long as it's present, you're going to have that particular trait. Now, some of the terms that we're going to look at as we work with these Punnett squares is homozygous and heterozygous. Those are two really important terms. And homozygous basically means having two alleles that are identical for a particular trait. 
So in this case, the two R's that you see right here, those two capital R's, that would be considered a homozygous situation. Their prefix H-O-M-O -O refers to same. And over here on the right again, looking at these two lowercase r's, again, that would be considered a homozygous condition because they're both the same lowercase r's. Now, if it's a heterozygous state, then we have two different alleles for a particular trait. So this right here, this genetic makeup, a capital R and a lowercase r, would be considered a heterozygous state. Hetero means different. So what we have is, we have a capital R and a lowercase r. We have two alleles that are different from each other. Now again, remember, they are the same gene. They both code for the color of the flowers, but it, they're different varieties of that gene. Now a couple of other terms that we need to look at is we need to look at genotype and phenotype. Genotype is going to be the genetic makeup of that particular organism, and phenotype is going to be the physical trait that you would actually observe in that organism. So again, over here on the right, the genetic makeup is going to be right here. So that would be considered the genotype. And this purple color that you see right here, that would be considered the phenotype of this particular plant. Now again, of course, we said we're going to be working with Punnett squares. And a Punnett square is simply a tool or a diagram that's going to be used to predict the genotypic and phenotypic combinations from the particular cross that we do. So in this case, we're crossing these two flowers. We have a purple crossed with a white. What will we get if we cross those two? Well, we end up getting a purple flower. But what's going to happen if we actually take two of these purple flowers with this genetic makeup and cross them? Well, that's what you're going to see down here in the F2 generation. If you look at this cross, one of the parents, and I'm going to go ahead and put a square around it, is capital R, little r, and the other parent was also capital R, little r. Now again, the gametes are going to be produced. Remember, you can only pass on one allele. There's a 50% chance we'll get a big R and a 50% chance it'll pass on a small r. Same thing for this parent because it has exactly the same genetic makeup. Now for those of you who have worked with Punnett squares in the past, you know that once you set up your Punnett square, once you have the gametes along the top and the left hand side, it's really simple because all you really need to do is just bring those gametes together. So in this case, the big R and the big R come together. So you have two capital R's. In this case, the small R and the capital R come together. So you have this genetic arrangement. In this case, big R and little r. So you have this genetic makeup. And over here, we have little r, little r. And so you end up with this genetic makeup. So again, this is a prediction. This is the possibility of what we might get if we had two individuals that are crossed with this genetic makeup. So we basically have 75% chance that we're going to have a purple flower and we actually have a 25% chance that that recessive trait will actually come back out, which in this case would be the white flowers. So again, these are going to be our phenotypic and genotypic combinations. Now something we're also going to look at is something called a genotypic ratio. So genotypic ratio is simply the idea of working with the numbers. And so if you look, genotype, remember, means the genetic makeup, and that refers to the letters that you see right here. So there is a 25% chance that we'll actually have a big R, big R. There's actually a 50% chance, we have 25% chance here, 25 here, that we'll actually have a big R, little r. Then we have a 25% chance that we're going to have a lowercase, lowercase r. So remember, it needs to add up to 100%. Now that is the genotypic ratio. Again, that's the genetic makeup, the likelihood that we're going to get those combinations. If it's phenotypic ratio, remember phenotype refers to physical trait, then we have a 75% chance that it's going to be purple, and we have a 25% chance that it's going to be white. So again, that's going to be our phenotypic ratio. And so you guys will work with these numbers um, again in class. You're going to get lots of practice um, doing these types of Punnett squares and working with these ratios that you see over here on the right hand side. So before we finish up this screencast, what I wanted to do is I want to make sure you guys are really solid on these Punnett squares. And so I decided to go ahead and put in a cross for us to work with and work through one more time. So here it says, what would be the expected outcome from a cross between a homozygous 
tall plant and a heterozygous tall plant. Use the letter T, so that's the letter we're going to use in our Punnett square. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure we set up our cross correctly. So one of the parents is going to be homozygous tall. Remember the prefix H-O-M-O -O is going to mean the same, so we have two capital T's. And again, we have two because, again, we get one from the mom and one from the dad. So that individual is going to be crossed with a heterozygous tall plant, so a big T, little t. And remember, hetero is going to mean different. So those are going to be our parents. Now, what we need to do is we need to set up our Punnett square. So we're going to start with this parent first. So remember, those alleles are going to segregate or separate. And so we have one T that will end up here and one T that would end up here. So we actually have a 100% chance that the gametes that are produced, those sex cells, those sperm and egg produced by that parent, will definitely have a capital T. But in this case, for parent number two, that's a little bit different they can produce either a capital T or a lowercase t. And so the gametes produced by this individual, whether it be eggs or sperm, there's a 50% chance that those gametes will have T, big T, and a 50% chance that those gametes will have a lowercase t. Now once we've done that, we simply have to fill in our Punnett square. So again, two big T's here, two big T's here, these two came together, and these two came together, a big T here, lowercase here, big T here, lowercase here, and so this is our completed Punnett square. So then what I'm going to ask you guys to do is I want you to be able to ca calculate or find the genotypic and phenotypic ratio. So the genotypic ratio in this case is going to be we have two situations where we actually have big T, big T. So out of all four we have a 50 percent chance of getting big T, big T, and we have a 50% chance, because we have two down here, of getting big T, little t. So that's our genotypic ratio. Remember, genotype refers to the genetic makeup of the um, outcome of the offspring in our cross. Now, I also want you guys to be able to determine the phenotypic ratio. So in this case, remember phenotype is going to refer to that physical trait. What would you actually see? So since we're working with the height of the plant, in this case, two capital T's, of course, are going to give us a tall plant. Two capital T's are going to give us a tall plant because tall is going to be dominant over short plants. So what we have here is we have two up here that would be tall. But if you look, the two offspring down here, that capital T is still present. And so, of course, in that case, since it's dominant over the lowercase t, both of these plants will be tall as well. And so what we have is we have a 100% chance of getting a tall plant in this particular cross. So again, it's really important you guys make sure that you understand, of course, how to set up a Punnett square, then of course be able to work with what you find. In other words, be able to calculate your genotypic and phenotypic ratios. All right, so that's going to finish up our second screencast for Chapter 11. As always, it's really important that you guys make sure that you complete your screencast notes before you come to class.